So three years ago, I made an IoT display that was able to display the time, date, and a lot of other things straight from internet. And now we shifted to a new studio, and I was thinking to add the display outside to grab people's attention at our studio. So I installed that display here at this spot so that it is visible from the roadside. Now when I moved down, I was like. Wow, it looks great, but when I went to the other side of the road, the display was barely visible. I was not able to see even the biggest font. So then we decided, let's make a bigger IoT display and then we came up with the IoT display version 2. So this is not just the bigger version of previous display, but it got a lot new features in it. So in this version, along with the date and time, we are also displaying the live YouTube subscribers of our channel. And not only that, we can also print our own custom message with the custom color via local web page through our smartphone. And in this, we also provided the Wi-Fi provisioning feature so that we don't need to provide Wi-Fi credentials in the code itself. So now in this video, I'll be showing the complete journey about how we made it and how you can make it too. So let's get started. This video is sponsored by LTM, which is a PCB designer based software company. Now LTM is not just another PCB designing software, rather it's a world class and award winning PCB designing tool that has some features like advanced interactive routing with auto completion, any angle routing, bus routing, face and line tuning follow me more and much more which makes it an ideal choice for pcb designing by a lot of companies along with this they do also have ltm 365 that not just covers the pcb designing part but also helps with design sharing via web sharing designs to mechanical team for product design centralized cloud storage and a lot more and along with all this they do have a very useful search engine made just for electronic components called as octopart using octopart you can search for any components and you would be able to compare its price and availability around the globe not only that you can also get the details about the components like its specifications and data sheet all at one single place so ltm provides everything to make your production task a lot easier so do try out all the services right now as you'll be getting a free trial version by just clicking the link mentioned in the description. Happy making. So initially we were having the single LED panel with us and to make it bigger, we ordered four of such similar panels. So here we are using this P4 64 by 32 RGB LED matrix display with four mm pitch distance. So after receiving them all, our first task to test whether the new display works with our previous hardware or not. And luckily these displays were perfectly working with it. Now in the second task, we need to connect all the displays and test a demo code on it. So we started combining all the displays with the cable, modified the code a bit to make it work with all the panels and after uploading the code, we were not able to see the data properly on the screen. So we started research on how to do it and while researching, we landed on this web page from Waveshare itself in which they guided us with using these displays with the help of ESP32 board. So we started with shouldering all the connections with ESP32 according to this pin mapping and downloaded the example code from the website itself. Then we modified the code to make it work with all five displays and uploaded the code in the ESP32 board. After programming, we inserted that PCB into the display, gave power to it and the screen started working. So with this, we got all the resources ready to make our project. So now it's the time to write the complete code to display all the relevant information on the screen. So let me take you to the code part. Okay, so here's the code used for our IoT display version 2. Now majority of the libraries are already included in this single file itself. So make sure uh, you open this all this file, like you keep all this file in one single folder and then only open this IoT display version 2.ino code, then and then only this code will compile. Now talking about some external libraries, then these two are the external libraries whose link are provided here. So in case if you don't have those libraries, click on this link, download the zip file and install them. Okay, now let's move ahead with uh, some important changes that you need to do on this code to make it work on your end as well. Okay, so first is this Wi-Fi provisioning variable. So if you have watched my previous video about doing Wi-Fi Wi-Fi provisioning on ESP32, you must be familiar with this all variables. So you can change the proof of possessions and the service name according to your uh, choice. If you don't change, then then only uh, then also this code will work. Okay, so let's just keep it as it is. Then here comes the some uh, like important variables used in our HTML document. So of course we have used one HTML document to take three different inputs. One is for the custom text. So if we want to display some kind of custom message 
on this display we can do that using uh, an IP address a local IP address and in that local IP address we'll be getting an HTML page which is written here and through that we can send the custom text along with the uh, message we can also choose in which color you want to display that message not only that we can also uh, you know provide the live Instagram followers okay so what happened is when I made the I to display version one the Instagram followers API was working but today in 2023 the API is not not working hence I decided to provide the, uh, those numbers the Instagram followers manually using the HTML page itself okay in case if you don't want to display that you can leave that as it is you can leave that blank and it won't show up the Instagram logo on the display okay so that's the HTML document after that here comes the really important segment called as credentials for YouTube so on this display I also tried to display the live YouTube subscribers on my channel and for that we need to provide two credentials one is the API key and other is the channel ID now let me just show you quickly how to generate the API key and for that you need to go to this page whose link you can find in the description of this video after that just scroll down and just go to YouTube data API version 3 and click on enable so I have already enabled this API hence uh, it is not showing the button but here it will show a button called as enable so you need to enable that API so once you enable that API it will take you to this page and here in this page you need to go to credential section and here you can click on create credential select api key and it will generate an api key for you so here's the api key i'll copy it click on the close button and i'll paste that api key here okay uh, that's one of the credential now for the second credential which is channel uh, id you can open up your channel if uh, you want to display the subscriber of any other channel you need to go to their home page or the main page of the channel and here this id is nothing but the channel id okay so i'll copy this ID which is the channel ID of techie SMS and I'll paste that here okay so these are the two credentials uh, in case if you want to display the YouTube subscribers live YouTube subscribers straight after that here I have provided the API details for current date and time so I'm getting the current date and time using world time uh, API dot org and I'm taking the time of Asia slash Kolkata that means the time zone in India okay in case you want to display the time in your zone you need to change the uh, change this URI okay after that here are all the variables used in this code nothing uh, new to discuss then here are the display configuration so you can change this configuration according to your uh, you know project so I'm using the 64 by 32 pixel display and I'm using five uh, total displays connected in series if you have more or less you can change the number here okay after that here is a system provisioning event for wi-fi provisioning okay so if we uh, give the credentials if it's get connected or not if it's getting disconnected all the tasks will be handled by this function and it will be printing the data on a serial monitor again this system provisioning event function is discussed in the last video about wi-fi provisioning you can watch out that video for more details straight after that here we have provided a big hexadecimal code for Instagram logo and one more for YouTube logo so we are displaying this logos on our uh, RGB matrix display now in case you want to learn how to generate these logos like uh, how to convert that image into hexadecimal values well that part is also covered in the version one of the display whose link is uh, you can find in the description and you can learn how to convert any image into the hexadecimal code and you can provide that code here in the code if you want to display it on uh, the RGB matrix display straight after that we come to the setup part of the code which is really simple in which we are you know just uh, you know handling the wi-fi provisioning task so we are providing the uh, wi-fi credentials via bluetooth in this code after that here are the configuration for the display okay then here we are handling the html document okay the data coming from the html side using these functions now what we are doing here is whenever we are take, getting the data of any custom message it will be stored in the custom data variable whenever we are getting the data of the color it will be in the hex value initially which we are converting into rgb values and storing in different variables called as r g and b and third one is instagram followers which are stored in the variable called as insta message okay so that was all about the html document straight after that here we have defined different different functions for different different uh, actions like void instagram is responsible for displaying the live instagram followers on the display then void youtube is responsible for displaying the live youtube subscriber on the display then void input text is responsible for displaying the custom message on our rgb matrix and then void data is responsible for displaying the current date 
time and day okay so all functions for different different tasks and those functions are called inside the main loop which is here okay so in the main loop we have very uh, neat and clean code so if it is not connected with wi-fi it will just print as wi-fi question mark and question mark on the display so it is not getting the wi-fi uh, you know router connectivity and as soon as it get the connectivity it will jump out to this uh, if condition and it will just pray, uh, print the date time and day in case we have provided the Instagram followers, it will print the Instagram as well. Then it will compulsory print the YouTube subscribers. And in case we provide the custom message, then and then only it will print out the custom text on the display. Okay, so that's the neat and clean void loop. And last but very important function uh, here mentioned at the end of the code, which is credential underscore reset. Now, in case we want to change the credentials, once we provide it, you just need to press and hold the boot button for more than five seconds and the credential will be erased and you can provide the credentials once again to the display. So that's the complete code. And now let me just upload this code onto my ESP32 board and then I'll let you know how this display works in action. Okay, so on the back, the display is already powered on and we are not able to show anything just because we haven't provided the Wi-Fi credentials. So to provide the Wi-Fi credentials, I'll open this ESP provisioning for BLE and here I'll click on provision device, select I don't have a QR code. Here I'll select the provision underscore 123, that's my ESP32 board. Select next, I'll select my Wi-Fi router and provide the password quickly. Click on provision and we are done. The credentials are successfully pro uh, sent and let's just wait for it. Okay, so we first get to see the current time and after that we can see today's date and day. After this, we get to see our current YouTube subscribers and that's it. By default, we get to see this much data only and now to add more text, we first need to connect our smartphone with the same Wi-Fi network and here as I already provided MDNS in my code so I can type IOT display dot local to open the HTML page. Now here I can write any custom message that I want to display and after that I can select whatever color I want to set. And in the end I can mention my current Instagram followers. After all this I will click on the submit button and now let's wait for it. So as you can see, I can see the current Instagram followers along with its logo and in the end, I get to see the custom message in the color which I chose. Amazing! So it's working fine and now it's time to install this outside. So for installation, we took this PVC pipe and attached this with our display with the help of zip ties. Now it looks something like this. Then we started drilling the holes on the wall and fixed our display on it using clamps and that's it. As soon as we powered it up, it started working normally and now it not just looks great from the downstairs but it is also completely visible from the other side of the road thanks to the bigger font. Well, how was this IoT project according to you? Well, do let me know your suggestions down in the comments of the video. And also share this video with all your friends who are looking for some big IoT based display. Well, they're gonna love this video. Also, do drop a like if you really enjoyed and love this project. And yeah, that being said, I'm just ending this video here. And now just wait for my next video. And then explore, learn, share with me. Take the SMS.